Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining the CITI program webinar on Title IX and the new regulations. This webinar is presented by Jules Irvin Rooney, who I will introduce shortly. Now let me tell you about today's presenter, Jules Irvin Rooney. Jules is a legal consultant and advocate. She serves as president of Title IX and Cleary Act Consulting, LLC. Ms. Irvin Rooney's concentration areas include education and higher education law, concentrating on Title IX, Cleary Act, and special education issues. She holds a JD from William & Mary Law School, where she was awarded the National Association of Women's Lawyers Award, along with the Dean Certificate for Special and Outstanding Service to the law school community. She received her undergraduate degree from the University of Richmond, and she earned her master's degree from Virginia Commonwealth University. The learning objectives of today's webinar are as follows. The first one is to identify key changes in the 2020 Title IX federal regulations from the U.S. Department of Education. Second, we will discuss implications for campuses, apparent ambiguities, and current challenges. Third, we'll share examples of how campuses can shape policy and implementation in this area that may keep evolving under current different political administrations. And fourth, we will discuss how new policies will affect administrators, students, and faculty. In order to do all that, we will go over four main sections. First is the brief history and evolution of the Title IX law, guidance, and regulations. Second, we'll highlight and show key changes under the Trump administration. Third, implications for campuses regarding recent changes and current legal challenges. And lastly, policy shaping through campuses and is it possible for more change if political administrations change? But before we get into that, I do wanna briefly talk about the previous Title IX guidance. Essentially, the Department of Education has issued lots of guidance documents most importantly, the guidance documents have stated that sex discrimination includes sexual harassment, which in turn includes sexual assault, and that schools must address those offenses as a matter of sex equality. That was based upon the 2007 guidance documents and also the 2011 Dear Colleague letter from the Obama administration. These were all guidance. They did not have the force of law. The 2011 Dear Colleague letter from the Obama administration required that schools take immediate action to eliminate the harassment, prevent its recurrence, and address its effects. That statement in and of itself spurred a new wave of Title IX policies, new wave of guidance, question and answer guidance, OCR reports, resolution agreements, and case law from the 2011 Dear Colleague letter throughout. And then we had the um, presidential election of 2016, sexual assault in Title IX were, was a topic of contention. And under the Trump administration, the Department of Education proposed new regulations and that came out in November of 2018 and then it became final on August 14th of 2020. The huge difference between the Obama administration's Title IX guidance that we were referring to and the Trump administration's regulations is first that the Obama administration issued informal guidance. It was not the rule of law. It did not have the force of law. Second, the Trump administration went through the administrative law process, including a comment and answer period, and formalized regulations that do not have, that do now have the effect of the law. And third, regulations will remain law for the foreseeable future. They will have the force of law and do currently, as of August 14th, 2020, have the force of law, regardless of what political party might win in the 2020 elections. We will be further discussing in a later section about the effect the political election might have on the current campus climate and also this guidance and the regulations, um, but we'll be moving forward here. 
So further in depth of how we got to the 2020 Title IX regulations. The administrative law timeline that the Trump administration Department of Education went through was first, as we mentioned, that the proposed regulations so moving on from those key changes, we're going to now talk about the implications for campuses regarding recent changes and current legal challenges. The impact on campuses, we can break it down to looking at employees and also students and administrators. Considerations though under this, these, the employees are that employees are protected here. Um, employees are protected under Title IX, and that because they are now more protected in a due process way, schools should consider or be in the process of implementing re revisions to their faculty resolutions, employee grievance processes, because those handbooks or those processes and contracts might be in conflict with Title IX. And you don't want to have something that is going to cause more legal challenges or more issues in the courts if someone has a formal um, resolution or grievance held against them and they say, but this goes against what my contract stated or what the policy handbook for faculty stated. So the best practice to protect all stakeholders the employees, the students, and the administration would just to aim higher and have new procedures that are revised that take into effect these new regulations. The regulations also extend due process protections for at-will employees accused of mis misconduct, which is a strong proponent of the regulations. Um, due process is something that we won't be able to go into depth here, but it, it was a huge issue when the regulations were being in the comment period and also before in their colleague letters, people didn't think they had enough due process rights, including employees didn't think they were protected. And now under these regulations, they are. The impact on students, the considerations to take into considerations to take into effect um, would be mainly the trainings. Students need to understand that what's next in this world of new regulations in 2020, training, trainings, and then updating your trainings. One thing that we should really keep in mind is that training is really important. You cannot, um, you cannot learn too little about this process uh, for the safety of your community and also for the transparency and, and well-being of the entire Title IX process. A training is crucial. Keep a pulse on the court cases. They are not likely to cause any strange, unusual changes to the 2020 regulations. However, they might be discussion points for a brown bag educational series and your campus, or they might just be something to note to keep an eye on for possibly changing your training based on what is coming out of the court cases, especially if you're in a, um, a state that has state laws or local laws that conflict with Title IX 2020 regulations. Also, is big and good to get community-wide involvement with your campus and surrounding community about the policies and educate. Just keep on educating. To our learners, I invite you to review our content offerings regularly as we are continually adding new courses that may be of interest to you. All of our content is available to you anytime through organizational and individual subscriptions. Please visit CITI Programs website to learn more about all of our courses and webinars.